Hello, uh, my name is Alex Glass with GRX Immersive Labs. I want to say thank you to uh, XPRIZE and Engage Platform uh, for our presentation today. And I'm here with uh, my co-presenter and uh, partner in education and storytelling, Dr. Kimai Wilson. Hello, welcome everybody. XPRIZE, it's such a pleasure to be here with each of you. I'm so excited to be pre presenting with Alton today. So the title of our presentation is called Storytelling in Action, the GRX Immersive Labs Way. And just a little bit about myself. Um, my background is uh, film and television. I'm a director, producer, and I fell in love with virtual reality about five, about five years ago. And I just really love what uh, virtual reality did for my imagination. And it really, really uh, showed me that, you know, coming from 2D film into VR, that the uh, imagination is frameless and, and it taught me how to tap into my childhood and my imagination again and to think outside the box and that the possibilities are endless. And, and from there, uh, I really realized just how powerful this could potentially be for education. And I was inspired by the rise of Innovative Learning Labs to take this on and, and take the immersive content we were doing and to move it into the educational space. And then uh, connected with Dr. Kimai Wilson. Um, I've been a teacher at the elementary, middle, and high school level. Uh, now I'm a university professor um, in the Charter College of Education. Um, really focused on teacher education. So I've had the wonderful opportunity to work with Alton um, in developing the Verizon app that really pushes forward this whole notion of STEAM entrepreneurship and really taking virtual reality and storytelling to the next level. Thank you, Dr. So uh, a little bit about who we are. Uh, GRX Immersive Labs, we are a collective of bold storytellers, revolutionary educators, and innovative technologists converging together to reimagine worlds in entertainment, education, and technology. And uh, we are a creative technology studio and research and design lab uh, with a dedicated focus on reimagining uh, how we leverage uh, emerging technologies, uh, virtual reality storytelling, and most importantly, as Dr. Kim Wilson said, uh, STEAM entrepreneurship. Uh, and our mission is to uh, break new grounds with virtual reality storytelling and uh, to be able to really, really uh, leverage that into our deep narrative analysis, which is understanding how powerful our own stories can be, how we can leverage our stories into these technologies to make them even more powerful and impactful. Um, our areas of play uh, our immersive content creation primarily. As I said, my background is uh, traditional film and, film and television. So storytelling is, is the heart of everything we do. Uh, and so we focus on uh, virtual reality production, mixed reality, augmented reality, uh, a lot of creative production in general, uh, IP development, which is really important, and um, game development, and, and just all around intellectual property development. So just taking your ideas and uh, bringing them to life. And of course, experiential learning uh, and developing your spiritual learning platforms is a key area of focus right now as we merge education and storytelling together with technology. And I'm going to show you uh, just a sample of uh, how we bring together uh, projects uh, at the intersection of uh, immersive storytelling and um, education as well. Uh, so we did a project uh, recently with Time uh, for Time Magazine, which is now called Time Studios, uh, called The March, which is a recreation of the 1960 March on Washington with Dr. King, where he gave his um, iconic I Have a Dream speech. And with that, we created an immersive exhibit uh, to really, really tap into how you can reimagine uh, historical narratives, uh, which was the 1963 March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom. Uh, and this was done in uh, collaboration with uh, Viola Davis is a producer and who also narrated this to, to really, really bring a whole uh, another element to inspire you uh, with her voice and her passion for immersive storytelling and education. So we're going to play uh, a short video that uh, shows you just what that project took as we brought to life, uh, recreating uh, the 1963 March on Washington and um, leveraging some of the tools today to um, design uh, a 3D uh, rendition of Dr. King.
The relationship between time and Dr. King runs really deep. He was Time's Man of the Year, and he's been on the cover many times. And, you know, we're speaking to the relationship that historically has existed between the two. So the march is, a, is an immersive installation, like stepping into a Time magazine cover of the 1963 March on Washington and experience up close and personal with Dr. King in virtual reality, uh, like we've never seen him before. We thought, imagine being able to stand in front of Martin Luther King while he delivers this speech. Now is the time! We're being in close proximity to history. That's where we began our journey. Right now, there is nothing like this in VR. The pinnacle of the challenges is the creation of Dr. King. To have it feel like you are truly looking into another human being's soul is very, very difficult. Um, but I really wanted to try to push that boundary and make a big jump in the industry towards uh, realism with virtual humans. To create a new blend of technology that allows us to do something that is as real as our digital humans for feature films in real time as well for things like VR. And uh, I think it's going to touch a lot of people out there in the country. And that's the intention. And Mole Hill of Mississippi, from every mountainside. Um, at this point, there's very sophisticated ways of creating a photorealistic 3D environment. Um, the process of getting digital humans that match the level of quality of that environment into a VR experience is still very difficult. So when we first started talking about this project and diving in, we were looking at a number of things that what we would call first. The special task that we had on, on hand for Dr. King was creating not only a realistic digital human in VR, but also historically accurate to a specific time. Um, and that time is 1963, on the day of the march. The process of creating Dr. King uh, requires a bunch of different teams, a lot of disciplines. And it starts with capturing our stand-ins and our facial bridges to MLK, scanning them through a wide variety of different facial technologies. Three, two, one, scan. Chris's face uh, shape and structure is similar to Dr. King, so it gives us a jumping off point to sculpt Dr. King without having to start from scratch. On top of that, we use a huge amount of reference photography as well as reference video so that the modeling team has something to match to. That's the first part. The second part is to cast a performer that can give the speech verbatim and use him as the driving force behind our digital Dr. King performance. Thank you. So um, for educators who uh, are interested in virtual reality, um, it, it's, it's been around for quite some time. But now, uh, as a result of uh, some of the newer, faster technologies and chips and so forth, we're now at a, at a space where we can actually um, use virtual reality in a, in, a, in a way that makes it uh, a little bit easier to get into the hands of, of everyone. Um, you know, you have companies like Facebook and HTC Vive who are now making, and various other companies who are now making these technologies uh, usable to be able to bring them into the classroom uh, to be a very powerful uh, computing system for um, the generations now to uh, learn from. Um, and this is just a, a brief timeline uh, as you see the progression of it. Uh, but what, what I think is, is, is most important is when you look at um, the evolution of storytelling and you look at how you know students learn uh, whether they're watching videos uh, or they're picking up a camera. I think it's very important to see how things have evolved. And myself, being a storyteller, uh, you know, I came up when uh, we were learning 35 millimeter film, and then that moved into digital. And now you have young people who are now using uh, cell phones to tell their stories. And not only that, they're they're creating their own enterprises, their own businesses. They're becoming social media influencers. Um, and I think that it's very important to understand how to make sure that you can adapt to the changing times and educating uh, the, the next generation on how to use these tools to adapt to the changing times and embracing 
the technology transition. So like as a result of COVID, now we can see that, you know, a, a lot of um, new businesses are going to be born as a result of COVID. Um, and a lot of companies and a lot of schools are seeing ways that they can now uh, be more proactive and being prepared for these, these shifting times where education is, is going to be a very, very big need uh, for us to continue to collaborate and communicate. So we want to make sure that, you know, uh, we don't get left behind with technologies. So one thing we like to talk about, especially when you think about youth and education, is meeting the youth where they are. And this is just sort of showing you the convergence of technology and entertainment where a lot of young people are already inside of these platforms, um, such as, you know, the boom of YouTube, um, uh, Netflix, of course, Facebook, Instagram, all of these different technologies um, and, and platforms such as, you know, the iPhone, Google's, uh, are where young people are accessing their content. And to be able to leverage tools now like virtual reality that are being deployed within all of these systems is a great way to reach them, to give them some um, uh, interactive ways to learn uh, through the use of technology and immersive technologies. And what I really love about um, these new technologies and how they're being made is you have a lot of young people who love to play games, right? So what they don't know is whether you're a storyteller, you're a filmmaker, a digital creator, or a developer, uh, or even a hardware engineer or software engineer, you have a convergence of all of these different disciplines that you traditionally were siloed back in the days, right? Where now all of these young people, these, these industries are coming together. So now you have STEM, which is now, of course, STEAM, where you're able to bridge all of these different disciplines to come together. And, and, and virtual reality, augmented reality, or the immersive economy as a whole is a great place to introduce the, these, these different disciplines and these career fields, uh, which is great. Uh, and then you can see all of these different platforms, uh, especially with game development, which is a very big one because you know the kids are playing the Fortnites um, and, and the Pokemon Go's. Um, and, and so this gives us an opportunity to create more immersive technology programs and to get their hands on some of the entry level uh, technologies to start being able to get an entry point into immersive storytelling and leveraging the virtual reality tools so here I'll show you a, a program that we have uh, that takes young school, students in high school and bridges them into uh, West LA College where we have an immersive media program. And then we also have a program with Verizon Innovative Learning where, we, where we're teaching the students, where we're teaching the students early on about these immersive technologies by, by doing that virtual reality career day experience where they can meet STEM professionals in virtual reality and hang out with them. Join me as we get ready to take these students on a ride they've never had before. You got your headset? This program is about being able to take career day and encapsulate it into a virtual reality experience. These young men are able to get up close and personal with role models and entrepreneurs working in areas of STEM and see that they can do this themselves. Students were able to see how technology is used in careers and entrepreneurship. The kids really got to see that you can actually create a business out of virtual reality and you can have creative opportunities to make VR from scratch. We hope that through that, they'll have a plan to be able to succeed and enter the pipeline into STEM and access to resources and money and careers. I'm pretty excited to see what ideas they bring to the industry. Our partnership with Verizon Innovative Learning is one of our core missions as we continue to build and level the playing field because technology is the great equalizer. Thank you. So I just want to talk a little bit briefly about immersive tech readiness, right? And that's the process of preparing individuals and organizations to adopt and deploy immersive technologies such as VR, AR, MR, or what they call XR, cross-reality or extended reality as a means for increased engagement or collaboration. And uh, as you can see again, COVID-19 uh, has definitely rapidly accelerated the use of a lot of these technologies. As you can see here, we get an opportunity to come into the Engage platform to be able to uh, communicate and still do our presentations. And with students, one of the things I really enjoy working with Verizon on is we were able to build an application that had cross-platform uh, capabilities so that 
whether you were in VR, whether you were on a desktop, or even down to the lowest common denominator of a Chromebook, students still have the ability to engage with each other through an immersive experience. Uh, Kima, uh, anything? So when, we, so when we think about really educating our youth of tomorrow, right, we have to think about technology needs your voice. The biggest thing that I've always hear as an educator is that students often feel in the educational landscape, they have no voice. So one of the things that GRX Immersive Labs, we're very intentional on really empowering students to design their future, right? It's the foundation because we know that the future is now. We know that it is very important to understand how we create a level playing field for future generations, particularly in the tech field. Look, we all know the statistics are very dismal as it as it relates to underserved communities actually participating in STEM. And so one of the hallmarks of GRX Immersive Labs is to really think about how can we increase um, underserved and minoritized communities to really be a part of this virtual reality space and really empower them in their own educational goals. So we do that by really looking into What's your DNA? And when we talk about the concept of DNA, we're really thinking about it from the standpoint of deep narrative analysis, right? We understand that everyone has their own unique story that they are bringing to a classroom, to the world. And so it's very important at GRX Immersive Labs that we begin to create programs that actually bring out students' DNA. And so let's dig deeper into what is this deep narrative analysis all about? Well, one of the things at GRX Immersive Labs, we're really intentional about revolutionizing education. And what does that mean? That really means we wanna create experiences that showcase technology as an equalizer, right? We know that if we are able to empower students to become their best selves, really begin to develop a STEAM identity very early on in the educational process, they have an opportunity to change their communities, change their families, and eventually change the world. Because we believe that imagination is frameless. Uh, we want to really encourage everything that we design, Alton and I and the rest of the GRX team, we are very conscious that anything we design, we want it to be an opportunity where students have an opportunity to think outside of the box. They get an opportunity to really explore STEAM entrepreneurship through critical thinking skills, through doing collaborative activities with each other, particularly in the Verizon music education module that we're currently designing and working on. One of the things that we thought we really wanted to empower students to go in and really begin their own learning and really take ownership of their learning, right? We want to position the teacher to become more of a facilitator of knowledge. And because kids are coming into classroom spaces with a wealth of information. And so we feel that every product that we design, we want to make sure that that ingenuity and that genius is to the forefront in every virtual reality experience. And to do that, we know that we had to have self-guided experiences, right? You don't need to ask permission to, to be great. We want you to create, we want you to explore, and we want you to expand your horizons and really make the learning experience crafted to what you want it to be. With that, create, build, prototype. Talk to us, Alton. Yeah, so, Rapidly prototyping, I think it's never too early for young students to start to build their portfolios, start to create, you know, so that so that they're they're learning uh, and they're doing, learning and they're doing, and that's one of the philosophies that really helped me in working with Dr. Kimai Wilson and our, our team is is getting their hands on the tools and being able to get them to insert themselves uh, into everything that they do, so that they can understand you know, early on, what problems can they learn to solve? Not only uh, te technologically, but also within their community, right? Uh, what stories can they bring to life so that they can uh, share and increase their cultural competency for each other and other peers in their classroom, right? And, and, and I think most importantly is making sure that they're, they're creating and building and prototyping because not only that, like I said, technology, uh, we know is, is outpacing so many different areas uh, in different fields, and we want them to be able to 
uh, gain those new skills, those, those, those skills that will help them adapt uh, and, and evolve and create those transferable skills so they can, they can constantly be growing um, as they continue to create. Um, and, and, and one of my favorites is um, making sure that they understand that it's okay to want to um, go out there and build your career and, and to get a job, but we also want to make sure they understand how to be investable versus just employable. And, and knowing that they, their DNA is a part of them understanding how they can take control of their destiny. And I think it's, it's a twofold part where educators are now becoming storytellers because they're laying the foundation for these young people to understand that the most important story they ever tell is the story they tell themselves first. Um, and uh, Kima, would you like to uh, add anything to that? And I just really love the fact that one of the things that we're really conscious about at GRX, we want students to be investable and employable. And we know that the futures of tomorrow really are going to be housed in entrepreneurship. And so we just want to prepare our students to maximize that opportunity. And why is immersive education important? Because of this emerging industry, right? So if you look back, uh, it took maybe 100, 100 years, or you can see now, for the traditional Hollywood system to be built. But as you can see, when they started to build that industry, they started to tap into the USC's, the NYU's, you know, and then you had a, 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 a large amount of young uh, filmmakers out there who went out there to create their own lanes and their own pathway. And now you're starting to see this new ecosystem being built with all of these large tech companies. You got the Facebooks who acquired um, Oculus for two billion dollars from a young man who was building a development team in his garage, and he did a Kickstarter for to raise money for the, one of the first early VR headsets. So being able to get these students to understand that they can go out and they can build these types of opportunities for themselves, I think is very very important uh, because this this industry is growing. And we we at the very very beginning, you know, at the precipice of, of a great opportunity for them to take an industry to build and create the language and the grammar of what this new immersive economy can be. So not only are they learning at the same time, they're preparing themselves for for an ecosystem that they're going to continue to build. And and with that, you, we know what's what's going to be needed. It's going to be hardware needed, software is going to be needed, and all these new platforms you're going to need developers and creators, most importantly. Anybody want to add to that one? So the opportunity, creative entrepreneurship. And one of the things that we have in GRX Immersive Labs is, even if you don't want to start a business, learn to think like one. Because we want our students to be able to problem solve. We want our students to be able to take the opinions and the advice from co-creators and co-collaborators that they work with. And so in every educational model that we design, because a part of storytelling is also making sure that you listen to other voices and make sure that other voices are heard. And so creating an atmosphere and creating a space, these are amazing tools that really help students become creative entrepreneurs and really bust down the doors of virtual reality. And I have this one of my favorite ones is when I talk to kids when we go to different schools and they'll ask you about a job or, or a business and, you, and they'll say, well, how much money do they make, right? And you tell a kid, oh, this, this particular career makes six figures. Their eyes light up. And you think the kids don't necessarily really care about that. The kids like to earn, and they like to, to, to learn and earn as well. And I think it's really important. It is never too, too early to teach them about uh, what these opportunities uh, present uh, when you go on certain career fields and certain tracks. Um, and, and even understanding... You know, as, as um, educators, where are the investments, where are the acquisitions, so you know where these industries are going and how to prepare these students to be prepared for that, that immersive economy um, or what some would consider this, this next fourth industrial, um, uh, new industrial revolution with all of these new uh, technologies that will impact how we live and how we learn. Um, and I think that's very, very important because especially when you start to think about how VR has now started to impact so many different various industries 
And then with the next wave of that, implementing things like artificial intelligence and machine learning, these are things that kids can learn about now uh, that they're already using in their hands when they're playing video games uh, and, and they're trying out these new apps. Uh, being able to get them to understand how to unpack those things takes them down uh, a road of discovery uh, that allows them, like Kim and I talked about earlier, of, of, of uh, unpacking new opportunities for themselves and, and learning as, they, as they're doing the things that they love. And here is just sort of a landscape, I mean, of, of companies that have um, started as a result of the immersive economy growing year after year. Uh, all of these jobs, and, and, and most importantly, what's amazing is look at um, all of these, uh, a lot of these are startups. So, you know, when you look at one, you got to imagine at least, you know, three to five jobs uh, are being created. And as that, as you continue to go up, you know, you look at the larger companies, the Facebooks, the Sonys, you know, the LGs, you know, you're talking about thousands and thousands of employees or what we consider entrepreneurs and also entrepreneurs supporting each other. So this yeah. is a, a very large landscape of opportunity for the, for the next generation uh, as they get their hands on these immersive technologies uh, when you're teaching them and to even educate them on uh, the landscape as well. Because you'd be surprised, a lot of these companies uh, and these tools that they use, you know, they, they, they love sort of, sort of like Fortnite. You know, when you tell kids about Fortnite and then they start to unpack the company that, that created Fortnite called Epic Games, and then you start to teach right. them about, well, how did they make Fortnite? They made Fortnite with a game engine called Unreal Engine. And now Unreal Engine has uh, educational workshops where teachers can teach through Fortnite. So, uh, you know, that really, really gets them going. Um, and then we have, you know, virtual reality experiences, augmented other experiences that will allow them to learn and, and, and not be just consumers, but also producers. Um, and it, again, like we said, meeting kids where they are, this is the playground for them. Um, when you look at places like the esports landscape, right? You have companies like Amazon who acquired Twitch. Um, and, you know, and then you have um, Apple, they're buying motion capture companies now. The things that you see in your phone where you know, the, the, the kids are doing like, uh, what is it, Snapchat? When you, when, you tell, when you teach a kid about Snapchat, what's really behind the mechanics of Snapchat is, you know, facial recognition technology um, that allows them, or well, I mean, reality technology rather, that allows them to be able to create these emojis that move um, to their face. They really get excited about uh, understanding what's underneath the hood. Um, and then you have uh, Atlantic Labs, you know, they did Pokemon Go. This company was originally the company that developed Google Maps. So when you teach kids and you say, you know what, you know those little cameras that you roll around and you see with those bubbles around different neighborhoods? Those are 360 cameras that are capturing the entire landscape um, and, and putting it up in the cloud for you to be able to go on Google Maps and see certain neighborhoods and communities. So those are, are, are opportunities for them to learn how to get new trades, skills, and new opportunities for themselves. And of course, you can't forget PlayStation. You know, they have a VR console. And a lot of these young people are using computers. Yeah. So, so NVIDIA, you know, they're making a lot of the chips. So there's so many different things that they use on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, they can be unpacked um, and, and take them on a road of discovery um, of opportunity. Um, and, then, and then what you end up seeing is, again, it, it falls right back to STEM, where these things that they're learning by doing are things like 3D mapping, navigation, uh, 3D capture, 3D content capture, um, uh, eye tracking, audio, you know, there's so many different areas that uh, you would just never really think about until you start to really dive deeper into what you can teach and what they can learn. Yeah. Uh, and again, you know, uh, the beautiful thing about the convergence of uh, technology now and storytelling is that storytellers and technologies are coming together. So now, even though you might not be type of student who may want to code, they're making programming languages that allows you to still be able to exercise your talent as an artist to be able to still be able to create. And that's one thing I love about bringing them all together so that they now, no one's left out of creating in this new te technological landscape. Uh, and I'm going to play uh, one more last video just to show you 
um, how are we able to bring in you know some of the, the young students from college and get them uh, prepared early as they move their way into uh, college preparing themselves for leveraging immersive technology. Today was an activation day and I thought it couldn't have gone any better. Everybody was having fun. It was nothing but smiles. I think the students' response to the VR workshop was really nice to see. They were excited about it. It isn't our traditional pathway. It's new for us. My students were really impressed with each other's work, which I thought was awesome. You know, we teach them traditional filmmaking, so um, how to set up shots from that vantage point. And I think the wrapping your head around the 360 camera and that new world and those new possibilities, that's the piece that I feel like the students have been coming up to me and talking to me about, was just this new world created by this 360 camera. So I thought it was really impressive uh, what JRX did. I think it's a wonderful opportunity for people who are just on the traditional film track because immersive media kind of offers you kind of a side door into the industry and you can find a lot of opportunities that you might not get otherwise just because you're doing something that's a little bit more niche. When I attended Hollywood CPR and West LA College, it, it gave me the confidence and the foundation to go out there and get real world practical experience. And that later helped me transition into the local 600 union and then ultimately into the Directors Guild of America. And I've continued to keep that foundation with me, not only as an individual, but I've also made sure that we continue to use that in GRX Immersive Labs and creating that safe space for creators and entrepreneurs and artists and technicians to continue to grow their craft. So we talked about uh, the march uh, earlier on uh, and just one thing that's great about immersive tech is that even though when you're creating these virtual reality experiences and stories, it gives you an opportunity to make uh, subjects refreshing and bring new, in, new insights and perspectives. So one thing I loved about the march was uh, our challenge was how do you take um, the civil rights movement and certain aspects of the civil rights movement, uh, especially with Dr. King, and bring something refreshing to it? Or, or our, and our challenge was what they call the nine word problem. You know, when, you, when you're in school and you learn about the civil rights movement, you learn about it in nine words, which is Martin Luther King Jr. Rosa Parks, I have a dream. And, you know, we, we do this from, you know, from the time you're in kindergarten all the way to 12th grade. And we wanted to figure out, what, if we want to take an experience like the march uh, on Washington, how do we bring something refreshing uh, to this experience? So we wanted to, so it gave us an opportunity to dig deeper into the nuances and the stories and the unsung heroes that were a part of the march on Washington. So, so opportunities like that we able to create a curriculum so, so not only when you finish the VR experience you learn about the rich history of what it took to create the march in washington when you come out there's more information to really learn about how you can continue to uh, be uh, an advocate for change and to be able to move forward and you learn about other people who contributed to the march outside of just uh, the people that you, you learn about the mainstream media so it, it gives you an opportunity to redefine narratives in a very, very powerful and meaningful way and young people to have an opportunity to take on these new technologies and bring in their culture and their point of view, their perspective uh, that you often may not see. Uh, King Ma, you want to close us up, bring us home? So uh, the question that we really ask a lot of the time is, are you immersive ready? Right? And we know that the immersive economy has a shortage of skills, content, and new talent to meet the demand. So that is why DRX Immersive Labs is very cognizant that we are concerned about educating the next generation because we know there are amazing content creators sitting in first grade, sitting in eighth grade, sitting in 12th grade, right? And so we want to equip them with the tools and the knowledge to really meet this immersive time. And so one of the things that is very important, even as out to show the different companies that are leading the way, we are very, we're very aware that in order to prepare our students, we've got to think in a much bigger way, right? We've got to think about how are we designing educational models in virtual reality that really taps into that student that loves art, 
taps into that student that loves music. Tap into that students that love to go behind the hood and really think about what the software is requiring you to do. And so those are all skill sets that are really going to push students and catapult them to be immersive ready. And as the world becomes our new desktop, what can students develop or create to help build the immersive economy? I, as a teacher, I had a lot of students who had a lot of family members who dealt with various medical issues, right? Whether it ranged from cancer, whether it ranged to HIV, they all had different techniques that they were actually utilizing to help their family mem member either eat well or just live a more quality of life. And I found that a lot of the system, the current traditional systems that we have in education didn't allow students to really think deeply. And so those are the very students that have some of the cures and they are the ones like Alton said earlier, that are engaged in the Facebooks, that are engaged in various technologies. And so tapping into their knowledge, we actually can find the cure for a lot of social and health issues that we currently face in our world. And, and as GRX Immersive Labs always says, there are riches in the niches, right? And so it's time to really go out and tap into those spaces um, where kids are bored in classrooms, where teachers are not really leveraging all the knowledge that exists. GRX Immersive Labs is poised to create virtual reality content artificial intelligence content that really reimagined education and really centers our students' knowledge. Uh, this Bob wraps it up um, on our presentation, Storytelling in Action, uh, Immersive Storytelling in Education. So we just want to say thank you to XPRIZE uh, for a wonderful opportunity to present Storytelling in Action, the GRX Immersive Labs way. Again, my name is Alton Glass, CEO of Jerry Express Labs. I just want to say thank you. And I'm Dr. Kimai Wilson. Definitely. Thank you, thank you, thank you, XPRIZE, for this opportunity for GRX Immersive Labs to really show you an opera showcase all the amazing work that we're doing around immersive education. So thank you so much. We look forward to interacting with you all virtually again.